I'm Dave Barber of Capital Television, coming to you from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House. In these segments that we call Capital Spotlight, we essentially bring members of the General Assembly in and discuss some of the things they've been working on and how it might impact you, the Rhode Island citizen. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, welcome to Capital Spotlight today the Honorable State Representative Mike Terrell. Representative, it's good to see you. Same here, David. Thank you very much for having me. Well, you know, you, you, you are working on some interesting stuff. and. Um, one deals with public utilities, some legislation that uh, deals with uh, public utilities that will require them to conduct detection surveys. First, uh, tell our viewers what are detection surveys, and then B, why is this legislation important? It's a little, my heart's a little in that one. I think you've seen me enough to know, especially when there's something technical involved, I really uh, dig my hands into that. It's important for people to know, as you said, to give you a little bit, just a little bit of a background. First of all, it deals with what's called contact, or probably more aptly called stray voltage. Those are situations where there, there becomes an abnormal electrical field where if people come in contact with both of those points of areas, they can be subject to lethal electricity. That, that, that occurs not only in the more recognizable things you think it could happen, like manhole covers and street poles, but it happens with sidewalks, fences, and even storefronts. The second most important thing to remember is there are stray voltage or contact voltage isn't new, but the technologies, as you said, the detection surveys aren't, the technologies are new. The outdated technology is really touching two points of contact with voltage pens, not reliable, plenty of misses, plenty of false positives. The more modern technology has to do with trucks, truck detection surveys where GPS systems are able to pinpoint with remarkable ac accuracy, 100% accuracy, any voltage disturbances and they're able to therefore find those and fix them a lot quicker. It's the former one, the outdated one, that unfortunately National Grid is still using in our state of Rhode Island here. Well, and, and, and it's sad too because didn't we have an incident last year in Providence where a small puppy was actually electrocuted as a result of this stray voltage? Unfortunately, it took that to kind of lead us. I think it was January of last year, and you know, you're talking just a few blocks away from where you and I are standing right now. That dog got killed as it made contact with a uh, manhole cover. You know, dogs are, are, are particularly susceptible since they have bare paws, which also emit moisture, are making contact with the ground. But that just could have, you know, I want to make it crystal clear, that could just have easily have happened to that dog's owner or to a tourist, or to a student, or to a resident in that area. Well, well it's my understanding, Rep. Taro, that some states, they've had incidents where humans have been injured uh, as a result of this. I mean, this is not an isolated thing. There, there are other cases in other states where this has been clearly documented. I could quote you plenty, but I would like to just say, because I was so moved by one in particular, we were very fortunate to have the testimony of Mr. and Mrs. Anthony and Nancy Green, known as Bubba Green. He was a former defensive lineman for the Baltimore Colts. Unfortunately, his daughter was just going to a softball ga game the fences with the lights were turned on. She was electrocuted when she made contact with a fence, and he came in and testified. It would have been very easy for that family to just shy away and to keep, keep reserved to themselves. They're, they're traveling throughout the country to point out the, the dangers that are involved. And very important is that in New York City, particularly Buffalo, which is a city with an aging infrastructure just the way Rhode Island has, They've actually been publicly, they mandated by their commission, the national, the national Grid has in those cities, the electric utilities, to perform the more modern detection surveys that we just discussed. Well, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the utility? Uh, have you had a chance to talk to National Grid? How are they warming up to this idea? I'm very glad you asked that question because you might remember, we may have discussed this, you and I may have discussed this a year ago. If you recall this situation when it came up, I brought this into the House and a counterpart of mine brought it into, Senator Perry brought it into the Senate and we passed a joint resolution a year ago requesting that National Grid consider this and employ the most um, effective surveys at that time. That was a joint resolution that was served on National Grid over a year ago. I never received a phone call, I never received any, any written correspondence, we received no, no correspondence and no feedback at all. Thus the legislation we have this year, just like in New York, the Public Utilities Commission had a mandate to them, unfortunately that's probably what's going to be necessary in Rhode Island and it's their responsibility to make sure that these dangers are surveyed, detected and, and remediated as soon as possible. I'm, I'm going to suggest to you that that was probably a mistake on their part. I, I don't know if I would advise them to ignore something like this. We only have about 30 seconds. I know it's a little unfair, but you have another piece of legislation that calls for stiffer penalties for crimes committed by gangs. Oh, thank you. for. I can summarize that very quickly. It's something that's existed probably for decades in the more popular, densulated 
gang-ridden areas such as L.A. This is something where it's not proposing separate penalties. It's very commonly done in these areas. It is imposing enhancing of, of sentences. So if someone commits a crime, it could be any crime. It could be an assault. It could be some type of crime that wouldn't even be related to gang activity, but it's knowingly committed in furtherance of gang activity with the intent to assist either gang members or gang activity, there are additional penalties that are sentencings that are required. They run consecutive with the normal sentences that were run for the crimes. It's, it's based on the fact that we need to deter and penalize gang related activity. Having prosecuted juveniles in Providence for several years, I can assure you this is a long time coming. It's actually very mild in the penalties that are, that are done at this point. It's an absolute necessity for a growing city like ours. Well, I know, I know the people watching right now I want to see gang activity nipped in the bud. Uh, Representative Terrell, thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, thank you. Anytime, Dave. Thank you very much. And thanks a million for watching from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House. I'm Dave Barber.